All right, so we're back from Connecticut, and we learned a lot. And one of the main things we learned is cooling is everything. And this is our first actual upgrade to the car, and it's a big one. Uh, we did a little research and came to find out the radiator out of the Acura Integra is actually twice the size of our current radiator, but it includes an oil cooler built in. So not only are we going to be able to cool the water going into the motor, we can cool the oil going into the motor. This wasn't an easy install after we rip out the small radiator and fan. Uh, we had a few issues. Um, we had to change up the mounts because they don't use the same mounts. And the fan. The fan does not mount up to this thing at all. Uh, a custom bracket had to be fabbed up by the mad scientist. And uh, it was a whole day project just to get this done. Took a little welding, took some customizing of uh, some metal pieces, but eventually uh, we were able to fit it in, get the new mounts put in, hook the hoses up, and this is our new radiator and oil cooler. So the roll cage has kind of been the thorn in our side for a while, and... It is time to get this finished. After taking some notes from some of the teams in Connecticut, we enlisted some help, and this is a special guest appearance from our man Gallo. Shout out to Gallo. Took the weekend to come up, go over our notes, and assist in welding. Uh, he helped us weld parts of the base plates, uh, lower cage, and we already had some of the uh, horizontal bars in but he helped us get over the top and finish the cage. All right, it wasn't easy. It took a lot of work and measuring, but eventually we got it done. <laughs> yeah. One of the things that's kind of bothered the mad scientist since the car showed up is the imperfections in the body. Um, specifically, the holes in the front bumper and fender. Uh, there was a kind of makeshift uh, quick disconnect for the bumper. It had some holes in the fender and the bumper. Bad scientists went ahead, uh, filled that up with some uh, Bondo. We uh, painted over it. We tried to make the fender and bumper look as good as possible. I had to keep reminding him this is a lemons car. Don't go crazy. We did start yeah. testing out some of the paints we might use in the future. There you go. There's a couple of options. Uh, after that, I went to the rear quarter. Uh, the car had definitely been in an accident. Tried to clean the damaged area up a little bit. Uh, again, used some Bondo, putty. Uh, did what I could, and after a little while, uh, painted over it. And this is what we're left with. You gotta have an external one and an internal one. So this is a big one. The fire suppression system is one of the mandatory safety items you need in order to race. And it wasn't cheap. Uh, we finally got one in, and the process of installing and running all of the piping was, um, shall I say, challenging. Uh, we needed to kind of design a setup, uh, run everything, and the mad scientist here is going to kind of walk you through how this is all going to work. These are the nozzles. Mm. That would be one set. This would be the other set. Mm -hmm. Coming out of the bottle... You would come out of the bottle, go so far, and go into here. Then one goes to one set, one goes to the other set. To the, um, to the motor. Right. <laughs> what's this? What's this custom bracket you had to make? I wanted to make something that to figure out how to mount these. Right. You got to be able to mount it. So this would have been okay, but so I made it so it points down, and then you have a set screw 
You can put this on any angle you want and it'll stay there for the whole race. Push them on, you can't get them off. Ah, okay. So that's why they're not on. So what do they make these openings with? What open the hose? See, they cut the hose. You look at the hose. Look at how everything's pushed into the hole. Mm -hmm. Right? Same on this side. Mm -hmm. What I did with this one, I took a countersink and I cleaned it up. So now it's nice and clean. There's no restriction. Okay? Um, Possibly B-pillar. I think that's what, on the B -pillar? Well, I can do that too. That's where we're going to put the other kill switch. It might as well stay together. The same bracket. You make a bracket that'll hold both of them. I can make a bracket that'll hold both of them. And then when you pull, naturally the pin's got to be out of here when yeah. you're racing. Now when you pull these things, it's it pulls. Pull that close, and right. you see this little piece down in here? Uh, yeah. It goes through this hole, pulls through, and then this pin locks locks it and it stays open until the bottle's empty. Hmm. You can get these bottles refilled. Yeah, we can get them refilled at uh, Stable. Yeah, that's the brackets that it came with, and then I made that plate. Ah, uh, nice. And then there's two hose clamps that go around the whole thing. And then this... I'm thinking over here somewhere. Yep. That's why I want to get rid of this. Yeah. So that it's not in the way. So why are these white? Once again, shout out to the mad scientist. Pick it up lunch. This is a nice chicken parm from a local pizzeria. It was delicious going in, and it gave me heartburn for about six hours. You know me, you gotta wash it down with the soda. So the cage, after it was all finished, looked a little ratty. Uh, it was in need of some sprucing up, and we enlisted the resident big calf uh, homie uh, shout out to Nick he uh, he stepped up when we needed him we needed an extra hand he came in used a little extra paint we had laying around and went over the entirety of the cage uh, a few other little spots inside that needed a little sprucing up all in all uh, Nick did great work again thank you Nick uh, this saved me and the mad scientist uh, about an hour or two he did uh, a fantastic job and really put the interior to bed. So the seat back plate is actually a piece that needs to be attached to the roll cage. And in the event you move your seat forward or back, there is a plate that needs to move with the seat. This plate needs to stay within six inches of the drive, the back of the driver's seat at all times. And it is a piece of the safety equipment. Uh, the mad scientist fabbed up this really cool adjustable housing for the piece. And right here, we are going to start making the actual plate. As you'll see in a second, it's gonna attack <clears throat> It's going to attach to a shaft that can move forward and back and have a, a bolt basically put through to lock it into place. Uh, we did a little measuring here. This is where it's actually going to get welded to the shaft. Uh, I cleaned it up a little bit so we can paint it afterwards. Um, it's always fun to use air tools. But after a quick cleaning, uh, Mad Scientist went to work, as he always does. I had to show a little extra uh, work on this piece. This was really well engineered. Uh, the Mad Scientist really, really goes all out with these parts, and uh, every time he impresses me. There you go. Great piece of craftsmanship here from our 
machinist. A little bend in the vise. Everything's nice and straight. Time to clean it up, a little paint. And, and we're gonna get it seated. There it is, nice and cleaned. Time to put it in the car. This is where you're gonna get an idea of what that window is for. The uh, rear window he made out of plexiglass has this little sliding door. This is the reason we have it. Here's the plate that's going in. He's able to adjust it from here. If you notice his right arm is actually through the window right now. Quick adjustment and the plate works great. Here's a little different angle of how this is all gonna work. During a pit stop, you reach your arm through, just close the window. So as we learned in Connecticut, if you're gonna race a Honda, you're gonna probably burn oil. Uh, one of the more valuable tools a lot of these teams had was a catch can. Uh, that's not necessarily going to stop us from burning oil, but uh, there will be less oil being recirculated into the intake, so we should run at least a little cleaner. The strut tower brace is actually going to serve uh, multiple purposes. Not only will it be a strut tower brace, but as you can kind of see from this picture, the fire suppression nozzles are mounted. And... We are now installing our catch can off to the side. There's the catch can going in. It is a really cheap, uh, kind of shoddy catch can. I would like to upgrade in the future, but we are on a very tight budget. I think this was actually $30. I'm not even totally sure it's gonna work very well, but there it is. One of the last things we had to do, and one of the most important, was figure out a way to get some switches working. Uh, for instance, our light switches were no longer working, so the mad scientist fabbed this up. Here, this switch controls our headlights and taillights. This switch controls the interior lights, which is just those gauges. And this switch is our windshield wipers. Up is low, down is high. And lastly, we have a plunger. Hitting this plunger will actually shoot the windshield washer jets. Thanks, I needed the bath. <laughs> I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. We don't really have much further to go before the car is ready to actually get on track. Uh, if you follow this series, I really appreciate you guys watching. If you can, hit like, hit subscribe. We'll be making uh, more videos in the near future. Until next time, peace.